coming up tonight on News Center Now, some encouraging news for certain people in South Portland, specifically those living near the jet port who've been very angry about the new flight patterns. This is Rohan, and he's bringing his one love mentality to Maine, perhaps at a time when we need it most. The most. <laughs> this is News Center Now. <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm Lee Nelson. And I'm Lindsay Mills. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. We begin with an update on a story we brought you earlier this week. Mm. We were talking about how a couple from Waterville, the Thompsons, drive to Canada to buy cheaper insulin. Uh, and we're going to get m more on this story yes. in just a little bit, but we're going to go live to Auburn right now to hear more about an incident that happened there uh, just a short time ago. And we'll get back to that story. Copies of this media statement will be available in the back of the room at the conclusion of the press conference. On July 27th at approximately 7 p.m., Auburn police responded to the Walmart parking lot for a reported shooting. Arriving officers found 42-year-old Gene Fournier of Turner suffering from gunshot wounds. Fournier was treated and transported by Auburn Fire Department to Central Maine Medical Center, where he was later pronounced dead. Detectives from the Maine State Police Major Crimes Unit and members of the Evidence Response Team responded to the scene to work with Auburn Police on the death investigation. Detectives have been thoroughly investigating this incident, conducting numerous interviews, and they have been following up on all of the information that they have been receiving. An autopsy by the Chief Medical Examiner's Office showed that Fournier died as a result of the gunshot wounds, and the manner of death is classified as a homicide. Today at 3.30 p.m., Maine State Police and Auburn Police detectives arrested Gage Delfonce, 21 years old, of Auburn, on the charge of murder in connection with Fournier's death. Delfonce was transported to the Androscoggin County Jail, where he is currently being held. Delfonce is expected to be arraigned on the murder charge Friday, August 2nd at 8.30 a.m. in Auburn Superior Court. There's been a lot of speculation in the community and on social media as to the circumstances surrounding this incident. We do not consider this to be a random act of violence, nor is the community at risk. Sergeant Hare will now entertain any clarifying questions you may have regarding this information. Sergeant Hare. Thank you, Chief. Any questions? Um, you mentioned a little bit about speculation as to what led up to this. Yes. Um, I know there are different stories on social media. Are you able to clarify if there was a verbal argument, if there was any kind of issues with the vehicles, any, anything along those lines you mentioned? At this point, all we're willing to say is this was not a road rage incident, as has been originally reported. Thank you. This remains an active investigation, and should any updates be uh, warranted, we will notify you. Thank you. All right, so again, uh, our apologies for that abrupt uh, change there, but we wanted to squeeze that in. That was a live news conference in Auburn about uh, the killing of Gene Fournier in Auburn in the Walmart parking lot. Uh, so we're going to digest the information we just heard there. We're going to get much more to you on our broadcasts as we progress this evening and also online. And now we'll get back to some of the other things that we started out talking about, right? Absolutely. Yeah, stay tuned for a push alert on your phone any moment now. So we were talking uh, about a couple who drives all the way from Waterville to Canada. They're going to do so once every three months for the insulin they need. It's cheaper there. A lot cheaper. Well, today in Washington, the Health and Human Services Department announced a plan to explore importing drugs from Canada as a way to lower prescription prices for all Americans. This proposal would allow states, pharmacists, wholesalers to get FDA approval to import, import certain drugs from Canada that are also available in the U.S. However, these drugs would not include biologics, IV drugs, or controlled substances such as insulin. 
There was a swift reaction from Governor Mills today. She said, quote, for far too long we have to we have had to fight the federal government tooth and nail on the issue of safe importation of quality medication and often unsuccessfully so, which is why I am glad to see the administration take a positive step in a new direction today, end quote. That said, again, insulin won't be part of this new proposal even if it does take effect. So the couple we met on Monday, Annie and Paul Thompson, will still have to go across the border for their insulin for now. Yeah. All right, we'll keep you posted as that story progresses. We're going to talk about the weather now. A few things to talk about. First, it's it's been crazy hot, and there's yep. some advisories to talk about. Also, we're we're pushing toward that all-time <laughs> hottest July. We want to see how we're doing there. Here's Keith to wrap things up for us. Hey, Keith. Hey, I'm going to keep you in suspense on the July I figured thing. you were. But we're going to start with the severe storms. We had quite a few of them. Up. And there was one really nasty one. Jess is actually on the way with Stormy down to this the damage in York, and this is a loop of it. Watch this cell come out, and we were on uh, Facebook Live during this cell because it was a, it looked like a big hailer. Sure enough, not only the hail, but the downdrafts, the downburst once the hail was done, caused a lot of tree damage down here. A couple of roads closed. We'll have a live report coming up. Meantime, uh, this little cute cell here popped up into a severe cell just to the north of Wiscasset on the way to Jefferson and Walderboro. And this is another hailer. You can tell just by looking at it, the reflectivity is pretty tight. The core of it is small. So it's putting down hail most likely uh, in the half inch diameter size, which is pretty big for northern New England. And then we have another line of showers and thunderstorms back here that are generally non-severe. It's been ahead of it in this warm sector that we've seen stuff pop up. So we'll keep an eye on them. That's the only severe th storm right now in the state, but uh, there could be a few more over the next few hours. And part of it is the juiced up atmosphere with dew points in the upper 60s and low 70s in a lot of spots. And we got to 90 today as well. So the combination gave us a lot of upward moving air that produces those thunderstorms pretty easily. So these models aren't going to do a great job picking up on finite, resolute thunderstorms like this, but it shows you a few more might pop up 8, 9 o'clock tonight before settling down. After that, we're on the uh, right side of things for tomorrow. Guys, uh, not only us, uh, Logan reported a wind gust of 74 miles an hour wow. uh, just about 15, 20 minutes ago, which is pretty crazy. So yeah. some strong stuff out there. All righty, Keith, thanks a lot. Look forward to hearing more about that and the record if we hit it. Let's get to some news headlines. The Senate Transportation Appropriations Committee spent the day scrutinizing the Federal Aviation Administration. A hearing was called following a New York Times report that alleged FAA regulators knew about the risk factors associated with Boeing 737 MAX jets before those two fatal crashes. The article revealed instances in which the FAA overruled its own safety engineers in deference to Boeing. Among the senators grilling aviation officials, Maine Senator Susan Collins, she pressed Carl Burleson, the acting deputy administrator, alleging that the FAA was more concerned with Boeing's production timeline than it was with safety. And Senator Collins also addressed complaints by residents of South Portland that the new flight pattern out of the Portland jet port is creating a real noise problem. The jet port director has asked for permission from the FAA for a new approach that could be used by some of the major uh, airplanes that are landing at night. And I pressed the FAA hard on that issue uh, to approve that new landing approach or come up with another solution that will address the increasing noise problem. And Carl Burleson of the FAA told Senator Collins that the FAA will indeed meet with air traffic controllers and revisit that flight pattern issue. How about this? Another college scandal involving cheating parents. This time it's about getting financial aid when you really don't qualify for it. A recent investigation by the journalism organization ProPublica Illinois shows that some parents are transferring guardianship of their college-bound children to a friend or family member. That allows the student to declare themselves financially de independent, making them eligible for need-based scholarships and grants. It even has a name, uh, opportunity hoarding is what it's called, and technically it's legal. The investigation found the parents involved included lawyers, a doctor, school officials, insurance agents, and real estate agents. While it's technically legal, it is ethically questionable. It's taking away resources designed to help middle and low income students. So a lot of you at home were not happy with this and took to social media, of course, with frustration. We will continue to update you on this story both on air and online.
Yeah, a lot of the people sitting right here are upset with this, too, yes. after spending a fortune on college. And, pay and paying back loans. Unreal. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a break. Coming up, Holiday Inn stepping up its efforts to be more environmentally friendly. And one chef's mission to satisfy a craving for not just flavor, but love and acceptance, too. That's ahead on New Center Now. And don't forget to download our brand new mobile app free on both the App Store and on Google Play. Holiday Inn is making a move to go green. They are. The hotel chain's parent company, Intercontinental Group, says it's getting rid of those tiny little tubes of shampoo and conditioner and bath gel, etc., in all of their rooms by 2021. Those roughly 200 million miniature-sized bottles per year will be replaced by regular old bulk-sized toiletries to reduce the plastic waste. The company, which owns more than 5,600 locations across multiple brands, including Holiday Inn, says it's the first major hotel chain to make the environmentally friendly change. You know him as a former president, but now he's a painter. The artwork by former President George W. Bush is on display in Washington, D.C. at the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. They announced the exhibit called Portraits of Courage, a Commander-in-Chief's Tribute to America's Warriors. The exhibit features 66 paintings that serve as a tribute to those who have served in the armed forces since the attacks on September 11, 2001. Free tickets will be available starting September 3rd, and the display will be open from October 7th to November 15th. He's a very talented painter. Really, really right. talented painter. It's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, kind of hidden talent. I wish I had a hidden talent. <laughs> Coming up, because I don't, uh, <laughs> we will meet a new restaurant owner who is uh, inspired from where he is and where he's been. That's right. Exactly. Keith is also back with a lot to talk about. His full forecast coming up. <laughs> algebra. Algebra at work. Just did all that for you. Yeah, yeah. You know, at a time when immigration is dominating the conversation nationally and here in Maine, we need to remember there are some relatively new Mainers who've been here for quite some time doing some neat stuff. Yeah, now they're ready to give back to the people who helped show them the way. That's the case for one chef in Sanford. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter where they come from. I see one love as all people. Words we don't hear much right now. This is my dream and it's coming true and I'm ready. So I'm looking for eight ounce. Not bad. Rohan Tomlinson is the owner and chef of a new restaurant in Sanford. One love. Rohan's backstory is one we all need to hear. I was homeless before. There was a hurricane once that blew the entire top of my house off and uh, I had nowhere to live. He moved from Jamaica to Florida nearly a decade ago. But there, he didn't feel a sense of community. It was when he and his wife settled in Maine nearly five years ago. It didn't make Jared Marnie, right? No. All right. He finally felt at home. I love Maine. I love the people. And one day in Maine, his life changed forever. You're supposed to know him. Famous guy, right? The famous guy. We are in the 207 kitchen at Omain Studios with Chef David Turin. Was David Turin of the restaurants that bear his name. All right, my next little project is going to be my little famous Jamaican jerk seasoning. Never seen jerk like this before. Rohan always felt comfortable in the kitchen. He used a lot of vegetables. And started cooking for Turin. Oh, that coconut milk, if you don't cook with it, try. Oh gosh, it's awesome. In his downtime at home, he cooked some more. You guys are wondering, oh, carrot in your jerk. This is flavor right here. His family recipes. We had a lot of leftovers. I'm a guy, I, I don't like waste. So me and my, my wife and my sister, we decided that we're going to find somebody to give this food to. They didn't just find somebody. He says they found a lot of people living in the woods who are homeless. When I see people living in the bush, oh, it hurts my heart. You know, so in any way and any form we can help, that's what we are trying to do right here, right here. And at one point recently, he was ready to share a little more of that one love with Maine, which led to Rohan starting his own place. Love is what I'm going to give to everyone in this food right here. His menu, a fusion of his old home and new home. This is habanero peppers. No better explained. This is not a real authentic Jamaican pepper, but 
it's close. Then buy the jerk lobster roll. Like a hot lobster roll. So I'm going to serve that one hot. And then you'll find like the, the cold lobster roll with like a, a mango mayo. Serving his family recipes, each one unique, but all with a side of love. So One Love Cuisine is on Lebanon Street in Sanford. It opens tomorrow. They'll be serving breakfast and lunch, dinner too, but reservations are required for that. That is on the list. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that Jamaican jerk lobster roll? I Holy know. cow. That Would you do phenomenal. the hot one or the cold the one? The hot one. Yeah. Absolutely. The hotter the better. I think so too. Yeah. Sounds yeah. awesome. You missed the subtle dig I had. You were like, I love jerk's one of my favorite flavors. And I was like, that's on brand for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. But it does look good. I was choosing to yeah. ignore you. Keith. Yeah, that's true. That's a better tactic. I have a button that I can just it's hit. And I... uh. We had a lot going on today, guys. We had a some lot. severe weather. And uh, this cell, this is a, a rewind, if you will of the strongest cell that we had come through in New York and uh, Jess is on the way with Stormy right now because a lot of trees down there, some big hail, uh, ping pong size hail. Uh, either that, there's two options here guys. The people taking the pictures had tiny hands or it was big hail down there. But there were several of them. So I, I think it was probably the big hail, but uh, <laughs> it's all melted now. When I was a kid, I used to put it in the freezer if there was hail. Like of course you it. did. Yeah, of course you <laughs> did. Surprises no one. Severe <laughs> thunderstorm here is the only one currently still warned. And this is another hailer. You can tell by the reflectivity, the purples in there. That's the hailstone bouncing that radar beam back and uh, seeing the density. So that's probably a good size hail, uh, half inch at least moving off to the north and east. Meanwhile, we've got some thunderstorms back here. These are multicellular and uh, not severe. And watch these two, because these could probably pop up here going up 201 in the next 15 or 20 minutes could be severe. So keep an eye on that. All right, in the meantime, it was hot today. 90 in Portland, 90 in Sanford, 89 in Portsmouth. And all of that led to that upward motion in the atmosphere. Thunderstorms still possible, eight, nine o'clock tonight. After that, we should settle them down. Deal with some clouds maybe early tomorrow morning. Get them offshore, and then the rest of the day is pretty nice. In fact, the, the guidance has been eking warmer with this. So even after our cold front, looks like we could be in the mid 80s in a lot of spots tomorrow afternoon, but it'll be a lot drier, a lot more comfortable. Friday looks good as well. Same deal, temperatures in the low to mid 80s. And then Saturday, we roll right into the weekend with uh, partly cloudy to mostly sunny sky. So it is going to be nice stretch in there. All right, Lee, I know you've been waiting for this. Yeah. So with today's high of 90, we um, tied and we have to wait for the rounding to see whether or not we beat 1876 and 1878 in the warmest month ever recorded. And I have these two arrows that say bad data. We talked a little bit about this yesterday and credit to Ryan for digging this picture up of where the thermometer was located in the late 1800s here. And this is uh, on a Shane Street on the roof. <laughs> they put the thermometer on the roof. So if you've been on a roof, you know why that's not a great idea. So this data is actually tossed out by the National Weather Service, but I brought it back in just to make a point, which is we're basically beating records that were set with bad data on right. roofs. Um, so which that kind of tells you something. Also, guys, not surprisingly, <laughs> this drags us into the race now for warmest summers. Right. Um, we're at number seven right now, even after June, number seven year to date. And last year, which ended up number one, we were 16th at this point. Oh. So oh. it all de depends how August goes. Sure. And the first couple of days of August are uh, upper 80s to around 90. So okay. we shall see. Okay, okay. but yeah. you're giving us a little hint as where we're headed. All right. Yeah. Good yeah. key. Thank you very much. All right. This is interesting. There's a new study that has found some fairly alarming statistics when it comes to food delivery drivers and their appetites. Have a look. It turns out if you rely on food delivery services, there is a really good chance at some point your delivery driver has taken a bite. Let's connect the dots. U.S. Foods, a major food service company, just released results of a new survey. They polled people who use delivery apps and the people who deliver the food. One of the most shocking findings, 28% of drivers admit taking food from an order, and 54% admitted they were tempted. Apparently, driving around smelling somebody else's pizza is just a little bit too much for some people. The study had some less disgusting findings, too, including the customer's top complaint. That was that their food is not warm enough, while for drivers, no big surprise, their biggest complaint was a lack of tips. What is more, quite a few customers said their drivers actually refused to deliver their food all the way to their doors. Close to 30% said the driver refused. Another 17% said drivers dropped food outside and then left. 
It's all food for thought as more and more people get their dinner delivered. And that's connecting the dots. All right, so here's an idea. If this is happening, how, what about, I would, I would call and say, we invite the delivery driver to come in and have a little <laughs> snack with us so that they don't take it while they're driving over here. Yeah. And then they could sit down, you know, right? Because if they're going to do it anyway, you might as well do it in a more I, safe environment. I guess. Let them know at least you know that they do that. Yes. I don't know. Yeah, it's, I mean. it's not good. Shouldn't be no, good. no, no, no. Come on, people. <laughs> come on, people. Come on. <laughs> a lot more coming up on News Center Maine at 5:30. Here's Cindy with a preview. That's right. It was a really contentious uh, Democratic presidential debate uh, last night, and we're expecting more fireworks in just a few hours as the 10 presidential or 10 of the presidential hopefuls take the stage in Detroit for round two of the debates tonight. We'll get a preview, and we're going to meet a woman who dreamed of opening her own small business, being her own boss, and doing it right here in. Maine. Well, she's six months in, hasn't been easy, but we're going to take a look at how small business owners just like her are making it work. Those are stories and much more ahead at 530. Back to you guys. Sounds, Sounds good. good. We'll see you guys in a bit. Okay. We'll be back with brain drops after this. Get old. Mm, it's weird every time. Okay, um, I had a whole brain drops plan, but I've audible because there's some crazy video coming out of Boston. We had severe weather down in New Hampshire and uh, southern Maine, but some of the storms that rolled through Boston had wind gusts of 74 miles an hour. Take a look at this video, guys. Wow. This is out of the seaport, which, as you know, is a heavily developed in the past 10 years or so area of Boston. And um, I mean, you you just look at that. If you just loop that to me. I would say, you know, it looked wow. like a, a Category 1 hurricane. Really? Yeah, I mean, that's about what it looks like, and everything's swaying. And the wind gusts of 74 miles an hour, that would be what you would need for a hurricane. Now, of course, the key difference is a hurricane keeps doing this over and over again, 74 miles an hour sustained. This is just a gust. Uh -huh. And so there's actually a nerd debate that goes on here. <laughs> When there's a wind gust over 74 miles an hour, people, sometimes meteorologists, sometimes producers, will say hurricane force wind gust. Technically correct, but the argument but from a lot of people, and I'm one of them, is it's not the same thing because it doesn't keep pounding. Wind is cumulative, right? It doesn't right. keep pounding on it. But uh, nonetheless, one of the craziest observations I've seen out of Logan, if you look at the string, not only did it gust in the 70s, it did it in the 60s several times after that, and it was just uh, crazy down there. And it was they think it was a microburst. Good news is Logan was on a ground stop. Um, so no planes trying to get through this. Right. Microbursts uh, are actually the most dangerous type of um, weather for an aircraft because essentially they quickly push down oh. and uh, if you're taking off you're, the pilots are not prepared for that yeah. and so that's why they shut the airport down but we can talk about that that would be an interesting topic that's someday a good follow -up. that's the most dangerous kind of weather for for airplanes my eye keeps catching your radar in the weather center and yeah. it's it's pretty active it's a lot, so a lot going on you got yeah. a lot to talk about we'll at 5 30. <laughs> new center main at 5 30 starts right now